How's it going, everybody? My name is Tim. Um, recently, I did a, a Reddit post and a Facebook post about my rig here that I recently built that started off its life as a Danchi Ridge Rock. Since then, it's had a whole slew of upgrades. Um, upgraded the servos, upgraded shocks to Desert Lizards. Uh, I got rid of the three-link steering and did... The Everest 10 upper arms. And they, they work really well. They It has the same, if not a little bit better, of articula articulation from the uh, the three link. But the biggest thing that people have questions on is how I did my motor setup. Because if you can see in here, that right there is a brushless motor. It is the Hobby Wing Fusion mini 16s and I have them front and rear and these things are just beasts they just run so well um, I have to actually tone them down because they run so well that the axles even with uh, upgraded to metal gears uh, they they'll probably rip, rip this entire axle apart in no time if I just kept it at a hundred percent the entire time but besides that I also have some 3d printed parts I designed that mimic the old spacing from the Danchi for the Lynx. I actually say better on that side. And then I have some extra holes in there, so if I ever want to change it, I could. I, I could. But this video is basically just on how I put the, the motors in and how to actually program the remote. Because when you upgrade the motors, you have to upgrade... To a new remote. Because in here. I have the. New receiver. 7 channel. And that goes to this. RC. G6. 6GS. Sorry. Um, 7 channel radio. Works really well for this. You just have to do a little bit of programming. To get this to where you actually want it. Otherwise it's not really going to be able to do much. So here's like the home screen. You can go back one more. It has this. It tells you what the, all the channels are doing. And how everything's working. But, so you got to come in here. To access the actual programming mode, you have to go into exit and enter and hold them. And then you have all these different options to go into. So to change the speed of the axles to a tolerable speed, you have to go into here to EPA. Then, right now, um, the first actual throttle channel that was on here, I think it burned out on mine. Everything else seems to still be working fine, so I don't think I need to replace anything. I also don't add, plan on adding any more channels than what's already here. But that one's burned out, so I have it actually set to channel 4 and 5. So, right now I have them set that it's only... 60% power because that seems to be a, a nice give and take. I could probably set it lower, but 60% it's nice to have that extra speed when you really want it to. Um, the way you do that, you just go down to one, you press enter, and you can go up or down with these buttons. But I like the way it's set right now. Um, it's also how you can set your, your slave s servos, their extents and um, and how much they'll actually steer. I think there's another setting that's actually meant for that, but it works really well in this setting. So, to actually go down... So, that that's actually the motor. So, that those are doing good right now. Uh, the other question people had was, how do I get the steering to work? Because when you upgrade to these... It's not pre-programmed to be able to crab steer and everything. So, like right now, I only have it in front steer only. But, with this switch right here, I'm able to use these modes right here to program this switch to give me the other pre-programmed, or right now programmed modes to do crab steer and then regular four-wheel steer. So if we go into that, 
you can see all these different options. So I have all the steering hooked to this switch, which is SWB. And then I have it programmed when it's down. And you can see that it shows that it's down right now. When it's down, I have it set to the steering plus 100. And that is crab walk. You also have to program this to be a steering channel. Otherwise, if you go on here and uh, press throttle, it'll just uh, rip itself apart. You, you, it's nice to do these settings when the actual vehicle isn't on. I've had that mistake. I had it on throttle and the steering just went full to one side and it almost broke a couple things. So make sure you do that first and foremost. Um, but I also have it to where my rear axle is on channel three. So I have that one that it only changes that, uh, that channel. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's all for here. So middle is just front because it's basically, there's nothing being told for the re the rear axle to steer when it's in middle. But when you go back on the second channel right here, PM, I, X, O, 2, go down to that one, I have it to where when this one is up, see it's on now, um, SWB up is 100 minus. In that way, for channel 3, my rear servos, they steer the opposite direction. So now it's just regular four-wheel steer. If anybody has any other questions on that, I can kind of try to be a little more clear but right now I think that's the extent of my knowledge of how to actually do this um and for if you're wondering right now there well there's no way to control just the rear well that's how you have to come down here and I have the rear being able to just use this knob right here. This is called the VR knob on this remote. So, to control that one, you have to go down to Auxiliary Channels. You have to set, right now my rear axle is channel 3, and you have it set to VR, and that's this knob, so you can actually control it completely independently. So, you can have this, you know, steered to the right, and then you could still use the front however you want. You have to be careful. Uh, you want it zeroed out if you actually go to the, any of the other pre-programmed ones. But this is actually really nice for if you're in a really difficult spot and you need this one in a really weird position, the rear one in a weird, really weird position. It It's actually a really nice feature to have. Um, the other cool thing that I have with this or what really cool option is this DR. That's dual rate. So what you could do with a dual rate is you have it set to another switch. I have it set to this other, uh, excuse me, this other three-way switch up here. And with that, right now, right in the middle, uh, sorry, the center, the center, I have it set that the front channels will... The front channel spins a little bit faster, has a little bit more dig. Um, I find it has a little bit more time, or more... It has a little bit better driving when it does it with these. So, when you go into a different up or down, when I have it to up, channel 5 is 100, channel 4 is 0. And that one is front dig. Then if you were to do the opposite, uh, that one should probably that one should be set to zero, but that's rear dig, and that's literally after you're able to tell it which switch you actually want it to. There are more switches on here; they're more momentary switches, um, not super useful for off off road crawling or something. Um, but it really works well with these switches right here. So, yeah, that that's the rig I got right now. I plan on having a lot more time with this and taking it on some rocks. But for now, yeah, having 
have a lot of good time. This is my first real rig that I've ever had, so please tell me what you think about it. And let me know if you have any other questions, if I wasn't clear on anything else. I'm trying to think of right now if there's anything else, but yeah, you, you guys will let me know if you have any other questions. I'll try to make a better video uh, in the future. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Have a good one.